Residents in the Timberwood, Timberwood Park neighborhood are speaking out after a man was arrested, accused of walking around their community naked. A fire breaks out inside a home in Kirby. Our Katrina Weber with a look at the damage left behind. We're going to be riding up and down the temperature roller coaster over the next few days. Quite a significant warm up through the weekend, but then a decent cold front will send our temperatures going down. I'll be back with a look at that and rain chances in just a few minutes. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And here is a live look right now at Capitol Hill. The impeachment trial of President Trump is continuing today. A vote over whether or not to include witness testimony is expected. We are monitoring a special report by ABC News. We'll bring you that shortly. In the meantime, Bear County Sheriff's Office arrested a man this morning who is accused of walking around a north side neighborhood naked. 34 year old Gilbert Ramos is charged with indecent exposure again. The sheriff's office says I spoke with neighbors and the man who captured that video. It was a surprise that it, it was happening in our neighborhood. I mean, that's why it freaked me out. Residents in the Timberwood Park neighborhood telling us their streets are known for being quiet and they are a tight knit community. But a disturbing video captured by one resident put neighbors on edge. To see something like that is like taken aback. Imagine scrolling through your video surveillance and unexpectedly you come across a naked man standing by your front door at one in the morning. That's exactly what happened to one Northside resident. That's why I was thinking it's going to be an animal on there, you know, and I thought, you know, anything but that. Your mind races all over the place. What? Why? Why would that person be doing at that hour of the night? After that video of the nude man was posted on social media, along with the help of the community, the Bear County Sheriff's Office arrested the perpetrator at 2 a.m. Friday. Deputies arrested 34 year old Gilbert Ramos Jr., who lives in the neighborhood, according to an arrest affidavit. You know, there's a lot of people that were, you know, nervous about this guy walking around, people with kids, you know, older people. And, uh, you know, the reaction this morning when he got caught, I mean, my phone blew up and everybody was excited that he got caught. Online jail records show this is not the first time he has exposed himself. Past charges in Bear County include criminal mischief, assault, and indecent exposure. Resident Amado Cantu, who has three teenage daughters, says even though it does give him a bit of peace of mind that Ramos is now behind bars, but he says he'll still remain vigilant. Well, yes, it, it is a bit uh, comforting that they are. They did pick, they did, I guess, catch the individual. Um, but it, you never want to let your guard down. No one seems to know yet how a fire started in a Kirby home, sending an entire family out into the street. It broke out before seven this morning in a room that was a converted garage in the 4800 block of Scott Carpenter. But as Katrina Weber reports, the fire affected more than just that one room. Smoke pouring from this home on Scott Carpenter near Allen Shepherd Drive told Kirby firefighters what they had. What they didn't know at first was exactly where that fire was. It was hard to locate because of the converted garage. Eventually, though, they did find the fire tearing its way through that converted garage room. They had to break into the ceiling to keep the flames from spreading throughout the house. They were checking for extension in the attic, make sure that it wasn't uh, extended too far. Before they could begin to move in and fight the fire, the people who live here made sure they moved out looking for safety in the street at seven in the morning. It seems there were 10 people in all inside this house when the fire broke out. One of them told me luckily they smelled the smoke and were able to get out safely. They got out, but it's unclear if and when they'll be able to go back in. Although firefighters contain the flames, the smoke may have spread. We are gonna contact a Red Cross to have them make location and either find shelter or family or friends. They also called in the fire marshal to try to answer one lingering question, how the fire started. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Convicted rapist Anton Harris, known as the medical center rapist, is facing additional sexual assault charges. On Wednesday, Harris was found guilty of raping and robbing a nurse in her medical center apartment back on May of 2017. He is also charged with rape and robbery and four other attacks in the medical center area in 2016 and 2017. During the punishment phase in his trial, those women allegedly raped by Harris are testifying this noon.
San Antonio police say they arrested a woman responsible for lighting a car on fire and vandalizing someone's property. This is 43-year-old Anita Rosales. Police say Rosales was upset with another person, so she went to that person's house and smashed her car windows and AC unit. When police asked her how the car caught on fire, Rosales told them her cigarette caught nearby leaves on fire, causing the car to catch on fire. However, police say an investigation showed she lit gasoline on fire intentionally, causing it. Rosales now faces arson charges. San Antonio police are teaming up with Crime Stoppers, hoping you know something that can help them solve a pair of crimes. First, they're trying to crack a murder case that happened back in early September. Ronaldo Alonzo Tinejia was shot and killed at his home on Blossom Lake near Highway 181 and South Presa Street. Officers say Tirina was seen talking to someone inside a small black car at the time of the shooting. Police believe this may be the suspect's vehicle. Police also tried to find a suspect in an aggravated robbery case. Police say this man pictured on your screen walked into a stop and save in the 7300 block of Marbach Road back on January 20th. They say the man walked up to the clerk, pulled out a gun, and then demanded money from the register. He ran away. If you can help police solve either of these cases, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. If you're currently looking for a job, we've got some good news for you. JW Marriott, San Antonio Hill Country Resorts and Spa, looking to fill more than 200 positions. The resort is hosting a job fair tomorrow. It'll take place from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. at 23808 Resort Parkway. Available positions include front desk, housekeeping, restaurant and culinary, re recreation, lifeguard, and there are several more positions as well. If you're interested, you can apply online in advance at jobs.marriott.com. You can find more information on our website at ksat.com. Well, Strong and Pink, the San Antonio Rampage, are trading in their normal silver and black jerseys to honor cancer fighters and survivors in their 10th annual Pink in the Rink. The game is set for 7 this evening at AT&T Center. Our Alicia Barrera at the ice rink where things are looking pretty pink. Yeah, year after year, this event has grown. It's been going on for 10 years, and in those 10 years, more than $270,000 raised. But to tell us more is Mr. Brian. He is the broadcast media relations for manager here for San Antonio Rampage. You have a special jersey, and I think that's the big highlight for tonight because there's a new thing. Every year, there's a different jersey. These are produced in-house by our graphic designer, Owen Lindsay. He does a phenomenal job, and this year's are a little bit unique. In years past, we've auctioned them off after the game. This year, we've auctioned them off in advance. These have been purchased already, and and the reason we did that was each jersey has this white sleeve patch. Mine is blank, but the players have all had names submitted by the person who bought their jersey, someone that they are fighting for or want to remember. So what's fun this year is that our players will actually be playing for the person that's on their jersey. And in many cases, our players have either met these these individuals or their families. So more so than any other year we've had, this is a very personal experience for our players and our fans. Obviously so special. And then another cool thing about tonight is that the ice rink will be pink. Um, tickets are still available and why is it so important? So I was expecting like a hot pink and that's not the case over here for the ice. Why is that? Well, you know, it's it's as pink as we can get it, but part of the reason why is you still need to be able to see the puck when you look down. And that even counts for me doing the, the broadcast up in the rafters. But uh, the ice is pink. There's gonna be pink beer, pink margaritas from La Gloria. There's going to be pink signs throughout that uh, people can identify who they're pinking for. Uh, so it's, it's a tremendous atmosphere of, of support and inspiration and all the benefits going back to Susan G. Komen of San Antonio. And that includes these mystery pucks that are going to be sold. These are autographed Rampage pucks, uh, Pink in the Ring special pucks. And 300 of them being sold, $20 each. That money going back to Susan G. Komen and to Spurs Give. Uh, and one puck is not signed, and if you're the lucky fan who gets the unsigned puck, you're going to win a team-signed jersey, the 2018 Pink in the Rink jersey, so that should be some fun as well. Wow, well, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon, and again, the game starts at 7 p.m. The ice is pink, so it's going to be a good time for you and your family. Back to you all.
Well, let's rodeo San Antonio. The Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive is happening tomorrow, and you can still get tickets to the KSAT Corral. Each ticket comes with breakfast, seats for the parade, and many other activities for the whole family to enjoy. The Cattle Drive goes from 9 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon, and you'll be able to see all of us at the event. I'll be there, and our own David Sears and <laughs> Ursula are going to actually be in the parade. It's actually really cool. For tickets, just head on over to KSAT.com slash insider and if you can't make it out you can always watch our live coverage starting tomorrow on GMSA. Hey just a couple of days away from the Super Bowl we'll hear from more players as the final preps for the big game are underway. And more airlines are suspending flights because of the coronavirus this as concerns continue to strengthen to stretch across the globe. Now to the latest on the outbreak of that coronavirus. The number of cases worldwide closing in on 10,000, with the death toll now up above 200. The World Health Organization has declared this a global travel emergency, and the State Department is urging America's, Americans not to go to China. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest for us. Global and domestic agencies continue to be on edge as the coronavirus stretches around the globe. The U.S. State Department issuing a red alert telling Americans not to travel to China because of the public health threat and the World Health Organization declaring a public health emergency. The only way we will defeat this outbreak is for all countries to work together in a spirit of solidarity and cooperation. While the total number of cases globally is approaching 10,000, so far in the U.S. there are six. On Thursday, the CDC confirmed the first case of human-to-human -human transmission of the coronavirus in the U.S. just outside Chicago. The patient, a man in his 60s who contracted it from his wife after she returned from a trip to China and was diagnosed earlier this month. He recently began reporting symptoms and was admitted to the hospital and placed in an isolation room where he's in stable condition. All six American cases are currently in isolation and reported to be in stable to good condition. But at a military base in California, nearly 200 Americans evacuated from the epicenter in China are still in quarantine, including New York native Jared Evans. It was completely uh, chaos. I didn't know, or any of the other American citizens at the time didn't know that the U.S. was coming to get us. So we were doing our job to stay safe and survive. Across the country, we're seeing more and more people wearing facial masks, but the Centers for Disease Control only recommends that for patients who are already diagnosed with the virus to avoid contaminating others. It's not recommended for the general public. Officials suggesting the mask could even increase the risk of becoming contaminated and serve as a source of infection. Delta and American Airlines have now announced they are suspending flights to and from China, and Senator Ted Cruz is calling for an outright travel ban with China until the coronavirus is contained. Trevor Ault, ABC News, New York. Let's get outside with live cam. 56 degrees it actually felt a little like, well, like a San Antonio winter for a couple of days. Is the sun week. coming out? It's kind of been yeah. hiding all day. The sun is definitely starting to come out, Sarah, and we're looking at a beautiful afternoon. The aquifer not changed over the past 24 hours. Uh, still sitting pretty, though, above the average for the month of January. And this is a nice and welcome sight. Mold and mountain cedar are low today. A good pollen count in the forecast and a great weekend forecast as well. We've got a warm up ahead. I'll detail that coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather streaming free on KSAT TV. Welcome back. Students in our community are working on ways to address digital inclusion in San Antonio. It's part of the mayor's Mayor SA Smart Challenge. This morning, students from middle and high schools in San Antonio came together for the citywide challenge. Their goal is to develop new products, services, or strategies to address digital inclusion across the city. We are currently working with UTSA to do a survey and kind of capture people's um, perceptions and experience with internet access, whether they have access or don't, um, and some of the barriers that they might have to that access. So the students today are actually um, coming together as teams to tackle that challenge around digital divide and building some strategies and some possible solutions. 
As part of the project, the students get mentors from the community. They'll also be trained in presentation and research skills to support their project. The project is supported by communities in School San Antonio, the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology, and Google Fiber. We've been talking about the big cattle drive. If you've never seen this, if you've never been downtown or you're new to San Antonio, you need to watch or go down there because watching big longhorn steers walk down the streets of San Antonio is pretty a spectacular have, have you seen? I've never yeah, seen Yeah, right in front of the Alamo, nothing yeah. screams Texas yeah. more <laughs> than that. Texas. Texas. That's it. So. And David say. Sears is going to be in it. We're going to be there. Well, y'all be down there. So y'all come see us tomorrow at the Quesac Corral. You still can get tickets. And oh, by the way, we talk about the breakfast. It's not just ordinary breakfast. It's not just the guy standing there over a stove cooking eggs. Yeah. He's got a chuck wagon. This He's is, cooking out over an open flame. This is a like cowboy it, breakfast. This is a cowboy Do breakfast. I have to wear a couple of layers tomorrow morning? I would say, yeah, wear some layers because it's going to be chilly right at about sunrise. And eventually in the afternoon, it'll be nice. But I think during parade time, it should be a touch on the cool side. All right. Yeah, so make sure to bundle up. But right now outside, we're starting to see some blue skies. It's pretty nice out there. It's 56 degrees. We're warming up this morning. We stayed cloudy all morning long. But as we head into the afternoon, we've been able to see the sun start to peek through those clouds. 53 in Comfort, 53 in Kerrville. It's 50 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 54 in New Braunfels, 54 JBSA Randolph, and 58 down in Pleasanton. A wider view here. You can see just about all of us are generally in the mid to upper 50s unless here in the hill country where it's a touch cooler. This is a look at the radar and satellite. Nothing really to talk about on the radar other than a couple sprinkles near Corpus Christi. But look at how these clouds are really starting to clear uh, along a, a line. So it's uh, pretty sunny out in Rock Springs and in Lakey right now. Still cloudy out near Del Rio, Brackettville Valley. But that line is moving through and we're going to be seeing total sunshine uh, for uh, most of our KSAT 12 viewing area as we head into the afternoon. Zooming into Bear County here, you can see that just about all of us are now enjoying some sunshine after a cloudy morning. Taking a look ahead to the rest of the day, it should be pretty nice outside. We're going to stay fairly sunny uh, and it'll be pleasant. Temperatures, like I said, are in the mid 50s right now. We'll top off right around 60 degrees with a north breeze at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then this evening, it should be chilly and mostly clear. So if you're starting your weekend early this evening, go ahead and go. If you're going to go out, make sure to bring that jacket with you because it's going to be a chilly. Uh, evening with those clear skies, calm winds. It's a perfect recipe to see temperatures plummet. Taking a look around the state of Texas, you'll notice some snowfall across the state of Texas just to the west of Lubbock, now working its way across a big bend area. That's around a, a trough of low pressure. Now that's just simply going to be too far north to bring any kind of rain to San Antonio, but we could have a couple of light showers uh, near the Del Rio area uh, probably later on in the afternoon and late evening hours, but it's not going to amount to much. Extreme drought going on in Del Rio at the moment and this these little splash and dash showers are not going to do much uh, to allow for uh, any kind of drought relief behind that upper level low there's sinking air and that's going to allow for a beautiful beautiful weekend for us like I said we'll start off chilly tomorrow morning near 38 degrees but we'll be mostly sunny and at 67 in the afternoon and then for Sunday itself just going to be a really nice day we'll start off again chilly but 71 for Sunday, pleasant conditions, and we're not done warming up after this weekend. In fact, after a small chance for isolated rain in the morning on Monday, we're going to be off to the races with that heat. It'll be near 80 degrees on Tuesday. Then we've got a decent cold front that's expected to move through on Wednesday. A little disagreement on how strong this front will be, but what is for certain is that it's going to be much cooler Wednesday than on Tuesday. We're thinking highs only in the low 50s, near 50 degrees on Wednesday with a chance for isolated to scattered showers. Again, no significant chances for rain over the next seven days, and we need that rain. We're under severe drought in some places. We could really use the rain, but I just don't think that we're going to get much either Monday morning or Wednesday during the day. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yeah. Well, new at five, check your TVs. We're two days away from the biggest game in football. Super Bowl Sunday is coming and it's coming in quick. And whether you recently bought a brand new TV or are making the most of what you have, there are three features that could dull your game day view. Which settings you need to turn off. That's today at five after entertainment tonight.
And coming up in sports, we'll talk about the Spurs, and we'll talk about Jason Witten. He wants to come back and play again with the Cowboys, and we'll talk Super Bowl. Spurs ready to wrap up this homestand before they head on the rodeo road trip. They take on the Charlotte Hornets tonight, or tomorrow night. Off tonight, tomorrow night. And remember, the uh, start time is a little later, so you see there it's at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. It'd be interesting to see how DeMar DeRozan reacts after he was not selected for the NBA All-Star Western Conference team, although there's still an opportunity if somebody gets hurt and they decide to put him on the team. We'll have to wait and see on that. But that ends a streak of 22 straight years. The Spurs were represented at the All-Star game for the game itself. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Hey, Jason Witten wants to play next season for the Dallas Cowboys. That's after he came out of retirement and signed a one-year deal to play with Dallas. That ends in March, that deal does. But as he told The Athletic, he understands with the changing of the head coach that the next season might not be in Dallas with the Cowboys. Witten played his 16th year in the NFL, but finished with a disappointing 8-8 eight eight record. It cost Jason Garrett his job. Witten still chasing his first ever Super Bowl appearance at the age of 37. And Dak Prescott is at the Super Bowl in Miami, and while he would rather be in the Super Bowl, the Cowboys quarterback is pleased to hear that they are keeping Kellen Moore as their offensive coordinator. And also, the first time we are hearing from Prescott since the Cowboys made that change at head coach, letting Garrett go and hiring former Packers head coach Mike McCarthy. So what has Dak excited about McCarthy? He's got a Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, anytime, you come into a, anytime you come into a locker room and you've got that, uh, guys are going to follow. Obviously, that's the goal, and that's what we want to get to. We've got a guy that, that, that has that and that knows how to get there um, and excited to follow him. And, of course, the reason Dak's in Miami is for the big game, the Super Bowl, the game he wants to be in one day. Teams putting together their final game plans for Super Bowl 54 featuring the San Francisco 49ers and Kansas City Chiefs. Now, remember, the Chiefs are one-and-a-half-point favorites because of one big key – their ability to come back. So even if the Niners get out to an early lead, Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes has led his team back from double-digit deficits four out of the five times this season. His team was down by at least 10 points. The Texans will tell you just how good Mahomes is at bringing the Chiefs back. Remember, they were up 24 on the Chiefs, and the Chiefs scored 51 straight. Hopefully we, we don't get down that like we have the last few games. Uh, but, I mean, the, th the best thing about this team is we've learned how to win different ways uh, as far as scoring early, scoring late, uh, defense stopping up, and us just scoring enough. And so uh, being able to play in every type of football game has prepared us to go out there and, uh, and win in whatever way possible. All right, so here's that matchup once again. Sunday kickoff, 530 from Miami. One and a half point favors. That's not a widespread in the big game, so maybe it'd be a good one this time. Wait, who's? I'm sorry. Say that again. Who's favored? Chiefs are favored. Okay. Well, Fiona, have you, the the hippo from the Cincinnati pig. Uh -huh. Do you see where she picked? Who she picked? Well, she vomited on the buoy that had the Kansas Chiefs logo <laughs> on it. So that's well, how she picked it. <laughs> a, a, a lion picked the Chiefs yesterday. So well, the animals the want animals the Chiefs. There you go. Are debating it over who's yeah. going to win themselves as well. So there you go. <laughs> But you got to go with Texas Tech's Patrick Mahomes to win the Super Bowl. Once again, here is a live look right now at Capitol Hill, the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump continuing a vote over whether or not to include witness testimony is expected sometime today. And we just got reports that Lisa Murkowski has decided that she will vote against bringing in witnesses. So she goes along with Lamar Alexander. There were two considered swing votes. So those two have announced that they will not be seeking more witnesses. Right now, senators are still debating. If the vote does happen, we will take another live look at the Senate impeachment proceedings. And of course, we will stream the whole thing live right here on KSAT 12. Just three days until the Iowa caucuses when voters will weigh in for the first time about their presidential picks. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is in Des Moines following the very latest. The countdown is on to the first presidential voting contest of 2020. Candidates and their surrogates crisscrossing Iowa ahead of Monday's caucuses. Iowans really do take their role seriously. They don't think about who is going to be the best president for what I want. They're asking the question about who is the best president for the United States. A new Wall Street Journal NBC poll showing former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders neck and neck leading the Democrats in Iowa. <laughs> President Trump criticizing both during a rally last night in Des Moines. 
Today's Democrat Party is run by left-wing extremists. Pete Buttigieg also taking aim at the front runners, focusing a new ad campaign and stump speeches on differentiating himself, as the latest poll shows him now bumped from the top four. The less 2020 resembles 2016 in our party, the better. Well, I want to make sure that as we go into these closing days, there's a clear understanding of the different paths that we offer. Mr. Biden on GMA this morning saying he's cautiously optimistic going into the first in the nation caucuses. I think it's going to be really close, George. It's neck and neck. Bernie's up, I'm up. There's a, a, actually, they're basically a, a statistical tie. But I feel good, George. I'm a tactile politician. Everywhere I go, the response has been great. I'm feeling good about it. And of course, Senators Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar are all in Washington for the impeachment trial. So they're really counting on surrogates to rally support during these critical final days here. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Des Moines, Iowa. 64 U.S. military personnel have now been diagnosed with traumatic brain injuries after the Iranian missile attack in Iraq earlier this month. That's 14 more than the Pentagon released earlier this week. Of the 64 cases thus far, 39 have returned to active duty. About 200 people were in the blast zone at the time of the attack. Now, medical experts say more are likely to be diagnosed with brain injuries in the coming days because it often takes some time for them to show up. The growing number of injuries indicates the attack was a little more serious than first reported. Taking a look outside at live cam. Oh, it looks like the sun's coming out. It's 56 degrees. But Sarah, it was super cold this morning. It was chilly this morning. We got down into the 40s. But you'll remember yesterday, we pretty much stayed in the 40s all day long because of cloud cover. So it's a welcome change to see the sunshine. Let's take a look at that vis visible satellite imagery right now. And you can see that after uh, this morning, temperatures are going to really start to uh, warm up with tons of sunshine in the area in just a bit here. Uh, but we do still have some clouds out along Highway 90 toward Hondo. Uh, uh, and out toward uh, Sabinal, but as you can see, warming up. Temperatures are in the mid 50s right now, 56 in San Antonio, but we'll be topping off near 60 degrees. Then we'll be much warmer as we head into early next week. I've got a look at that temperature roller coaster coming up in a few. Tickets are on sale. Expect to slow down this weekend, but two new movies are hoping to motivate fans to head to the theater. And the FCC is working on a plan to push broadband internet to more areas. How much money they'll spend to make it happen. Hello everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. IBM has announced that their president and CEO of Virginia, Ginny Romney, is stepping down. She will be replaced by Arvind Krishna, who will become the company's 10th CEO effective on April 6th. Now, Romney will remain the company's executive chairman through the end of the year before her retirement. Meanwhile, Delta Airlines is replacing the Lands End uniforms after several employees complain that they're causing health issues. Over 500 employees filed a federal lawsuit against the clothing brand at the end of last year, alleging the uniforms caused health problems like rashes, blurred vision, and even trouble breathing. And dating apps like Tinder and Bumble are under investigation by a U.S. sub-house committee. The committee claims that the apps allegedly allow minors and sex offenders to use the services. The investigation will look into the app's private policies, the complaints, and all the data that's being collected on those users. And that's Cheddar. This is the Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Well, Boeing is is to start making their 737 MAX jets again. The company reached an agreement with Spirit Aero, Aero, Aero Systems to restart production of key parts of its planes. Production stopped and the planes were grounded last year after two deadly crashes. Under the agreement, Spirit will start building parts for the 737 MAX slowly. Then it will ramp up deliveries throughout the year. Production could start in the spring. 2019, a tough year for American farmers. U.S. farm bankruptcies jumped 20% last year. And that's the highest level since 2011 when the country was still recovering from the latest recession. This despite $28 billion in aid extended to farmers over the past couple of years. According to the American Farm Bureau, 595 family farms declared Chapter 12 bankruptcy. The cause, uncertainty in the market spurred by trade wars and rewritten, inter rewritten international agreements. 
The FCC is now promising to spend over $20 billion to push broadband internet into rural parts of the country. That's supposed to happen over the next decade. The first phase of the program will kick off later this year. It will focus on getting around 6 million homes and businesses better internet. New emojis are on the way, 117 of them. Matter of fact, they'll be rolled out later on this year. The big theme appears to be gender inclusivity. We'll be getting the transgender flag, a gender neutral Santa, and a man wearing a wedding veil. Another entry sure to be popular is called Italian hand gesture. I'm not exactly sure which one that is. Oh, that's the one. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank got you, that. Sarah. It's the pinched fingers together, often used to express confusion or disbelief. Ninjas, mammoths, bubble tea, and human heart. A, a smiley face along there, too. Shedding a single tear will also make the cuts. Well, the Super Bowl is around the corner, and millions are getting their plans together for the big game. RJ Marquez has a look at how much people are expected to spend this year. The National Retail Federation has released its annual Super Bowl survey and nearly 194 million people are expected to tune in for the big game between the Chiefs and 49ers. The survey has been conducted for more than a decade and this year's spending is on track to be the highest ever for a Super Bowl in estimated $17.2 billion. The NRF expects each viewer to spend less than $90 on average. Only 19% of viewers are planning to throw a party and 27% are planning to attend one. So how do the numbers break down? 80% of Super Bowl purchases are expected to be for food and drinks. The rest will go toward team apparel, new TVs, decorations and furniture. San Francisco going Kansas City face off in Super Bowl 54 in Miami Gardens this Sunday. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. According to the NRF, this year's $17.2 billion figure drastically overthrows the recent highest historical spending of $15.5 billion from 2016. And yeah, the weather looks pretty good for an outdoor Super Bowl party, too. Oh, definitely. Maybe even one of those mm, ah, ones, right? Was yeah, but the, 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 the weather, the weather yeah. is perfect. The weather will be perfect. There you go. There That's what go. that was. Okay. That's the pinched Italian. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right, in the aquifer level, no change to the aquifer uh, over the past 24 hours. And in the pollen count, this is great news. Mold and mountain cedar are low. The second day in a row where we've had a pretty nice pollen count. By the way, mountain cedar season usually comes to an end right around Valentine's Day. We are going to warm up significantly, though, into the weekend and early next week. I've got a look at that forecast as well as rain chances coming up. Welcome back. Hospitals are always in need of an adequate supply of blood. However, getting blood donors can sometimes be challenging. Although blood donations most frequently benefit trauma patients, they are also beneficial to cancer patients. University Hospitals Emergency Department averages 70,000 emergency patients a year. And in 2017, it transfused 30,000 patients. Doctors say blood transfusions can be also a crucial part of the recovery process of their battling cancer. Well, it changes a lot because I don't get injured somewhere. I don't have to worry about falling down that I was going to, um, you know, things like that are going to be critical. I don't bruise easy, you know, things that uh, matter. It's just as for the plight. That's, with blood, it means everything because I, I, I tire easily. I could fall down. I've done that a couple of times. You know, it just, it makes a difference in life for me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Jerry Mirellis is a patient at University Hospital and is receiving blood transfusions as part of his treatment for lymphoma. He was diagnosed back in 2017 and says these transfusions will help him be strong enough for a stem cell transplant. He hopes more people will answer the call to donate to help save his life and the lives of many others. So if you'd like to donate, there are two locations where you can do so today as a part of the KSAT Community Blood Drive. The first is the Robert B. Green Pavilion in the 900 block of West Martin Street. They were open at 10 this morning and they'll stay open until 4 this afternoon. And you can also swing by University Hospital until 5 p.m. this evening. For more information, just visit the community section on our website, ksat.com. Sarah? Yeah? Sarah? What's up? Sarah? Sarah? What's up? I'm confused. <laughs> Don't be too confused, David. So first, we got to get through today, yeah. and then tomorrow morning, it's the big cattle drive. It is. It's going to be a little chilly. It will be a little chilly in the morning to start, so but it's it a layer day. Yeah, your I would say. cowboy leather jacket. <laughs> yeah, maybe I have a couple of. 
Can probably. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah for probably, sure, does. David. Uh, yeah, a couple layers tomorrow because we're going to start off in the 30s shortly after sunrise. Ooh. Yeah, 38 That's for chilly. the morning low. Yeah, right. but but in the afternoon we'll be in the upper 60s, so it'll be pretty nice. Well, you, you can't drive cattle when it's 105. So, no, you know, no. It has to be a little and cold. It and definitely feel, won't yeah. be that warm. Uh, but speaking of cold, this day in weather history is pretty interesting because the coldest temperature on record in Ooh. San Antonio was recorded way back in 19. 49. Our morning low that day was a whopping zero degrees. And the reason for that was we had snow on the ground, a snowpack on the ground. And so temperatures were able to cool down to the coldest it's ever been in San Antonio way back in 1949. And also it was cold across South Texas. Austin was at two below zero that morning. So again, very cold day in weather history uh, way back in 1949. We started off pretty cloudy out there. It was hard for us to see much of any uh, sun Sunshine, but we've been able to really see those skies clear and it's mostly cloudy at the moment, but plenty of sunshine out there. 56 degrees. We've got comfortable humidity only at 49% and barely a northeast breeze at about five miles per hour. Here's a look at the visible satellite through this morning. It was cloudy, but as you can see, a couple of those puffy cumulus clouds that kind of look like popcorn uh, from space out there across the hill country. But there's that clearing line. It's still pretty cloudy out in Del Rio, pretty cloudy right now. In Yavaldi and an Eagle Pass, but you'll be able to see sunshine here shortly. And again, across the Alamo City, starting to see that sun come out, and it's pretty nice. It's 56 at, in San Antonio at the airport, 54 in New Braunfels, and in Kerrville, 53 in Del Rio. A little bit cooler in Del Rio than here in San Antonio, and again, the reason for that is that extra cloud cover out there. 52 in Carrizo Springs. And it's 52 in Gonzales. In the high rise future cast, again, total sunshine this afternoon. Uh, maybe a couple of puffy cumulus clouds here and there, but it's going to be a beautiful rest of the day. Clearing skies, a high near about 60 degrees. And then take a look at these temperatures tonight. We'll be cooling down pretty quickly. By midnight, we should be in the uh, low to mid 40s, uh, chilly conditions this evening. A north breeze at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at our weather setup. This system out to the West has been interesting because just to the southwest of Lubbock, there was some snow earlier today all around a trough of low pressure. Now, this is too far north to produce any substantial rain uh, in San Antonio, any rain chances at all. But there is a small chance for some isolated showers out near Del Rio into the evening hours. So we'll keep an eye on that Del Rio in the middle of extreme drought at the moment. And although this won't amount to much, any little bit of rain is okay in my book. Behind it, we've got sinking air. Now the sinking air is going to move over Texas in the next about 24 to 48 hours. So because of that, we're going to warm up and we are on that temperature roller coaster. Yesterday, the high was only 52 degrees. Today, we'll be near 60. Then as we head into the weekend, we'll be near 70 on both Saturday and Sunday. Topping off early next week, near 80 degrees and then all forecasts are hinting at a potential for a pretty strong front by the middle of next week. We could be back in the 50s for high temperatures and it will be windy, so there will be a wind chill uh, by that Wednesday. As far as rain chances go, not looking great. A few isolated showers early Monday morning and then some isolated rain on Wednesday behind that front, but that's about it. But that's about it. Is that, was that a cowboy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeehaw. Getting ready. We're getting ready. It's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a fun day tomorrow. Yes, it is. Well, welcome back. Super Bowl weekend is traditionally really slow when it comes to ticket movie tick, movie ticket sales, but a pair of new movies are hoping to break that tradition. CNN's David Daniel takes a look at what the experts are saying about the newest films at the box office. I lost my family three years ago. It wasn't an accident. There was a bomb on that plane. Blake Lively and Jude Law star in The Rhythm Section. It's not about a band. She wants revenge on the people who killed her family. He trains her to take that revenge violently. Analyst forecasts for the thriller's opening weekend range from four to $12 million. Not great for a film that cost 50 million to make. You've been turned out of your home. Set out to fend for yourselves with only your clothes and your hides. I'm hungry. 
I'm hungrier than you are. Because you're a pig. Gretel and Hansel puts a supernatural spin on the fairy tale. As the inverted title indicates, the focus is on the sister this time around. Box office watchers are looking at a debut worth four to seven million dollars. Not bad, considering it only cost about five million to produce. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, let's check in with our own superstars. Getting ready for another fun edition of SA Live. This is a first. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've never done an interview in a hot tub before, uh, let alone alongside Mike Osterhage. And alongside. you know him from movies and television, actor, comedian, Craig Robinson joins us in this hot tub time machine on this Flashback Friday. Are we going to the future or the past? Something like that. Uh, let's go to the future. <laughs> okay. Let's go uh, so bet on the game. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, let's go right after the game ends and we can bet on the game. Something yes. like that. So he's he's going to be at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Clubs. So we're going to have a lot of laughs with him coming up in just a few minutes. So this is the perfect way to relax. Yes. Also, maybe a little exercise. Relax with some Pilates. And, boy, there's a lot going on. I'm liking this. Yes. Down here. A lot going on this weekend. Yes. The Vaquero Cook-Off, of course, we are out there live. Jen is going to have the latest from there. And, of course, big game is Sunday, and everybody wants a place to watch it. We've got the perfect place with some great cocktails. Cocktails and also food. Oh, yes. And woo! woo. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.